brothers and sisters. Yes, true fit. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm learning all the false information we've been programmed. We've takes time and patience. We've got this tonight, brothers and sisters. And we've got our beautiful king tonight, Professor Kabar, all the way from New York City. The theme is children of the sun. I'm gonna let you know, brothers and sisters, I'm not just saying it to make the brother feel good. I love this brother. I ain't just because of his knowledge and his wisdom. I speak offline on this brother, and this brother is so humble, so wise, so courageous. And, you know, I just can't wait every single week to bring this king on. This is when I know that God is real. God loves me because he surrounds me with great people. He's one of my teachers, brothers and sisters. And that's why we're honored, honored to have this brother with us. Professor Kabar, talk to us, my king. We're on there waiting for you, soldier. Hotep and peace to my family. I appreciate you. To my brother, thank you so much for this opportunity to be with the family once again. And, you know, there's so many things that even sitting here watching the program as we've been moving, um, you know, uh, when, I, when I saw you doing the Matrix, I uh, had to bring my red pill. Yes! <laughs> I had to bring my red pill out uh, to help us understand. I got the blue pill in the room, but uh, we got the red pill, which awakens us and opens up our eyes. And the the other piece is Dr. Sebi, because I'm I'm also part of that film uh, that that you just previewed. Uh, you know, I I was going to Dr. Sebi. I've been going to, and now to his wife, Sister Ma'at, I've been uh, going to Dr. Sabi and following his regimen since October 4th, 1988. 88? 88, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, and I'll tell you a story. Um, be before I had a car and I was working in the Board of Ed, I used to take the bus to work. And um, I had a subscription to a weekly African-American magazine in New York called the Amsterdam News. And I, I followed Dr. Sebi's um, court case. And on October 1st, 1988, it was reported in the Amsterdam News that Dr. Sebi had been um, proven innocent. Yes. Of the charges. This is in October 1st, 1988. It was a Wednesday. That Saturday, October 4th, I was in his, um, his center in Brooklyn, 616 Pacific Street. And since that day on, I've been, in fact, I just took some of the products now, Maya for the blood and Bolo for the immune system, um, Evasolve, which is a lotion for the body, uh, so I've been going to, the, and, and I was talking about Dr. Sebi many years ago. Wow. About what needed to be done. And that's why I'm in the film, because when, when Nick Cannon approached me and asked me if I'd be in it, wow. I said, to him, why me? You know, what is it about me? He said, you go back in time talking about Dr. Sebi. You know, he treated Teddy Pendergrass. What? He treated Michael Jackson. I didn't know this. Yes. Oh, I know that for, you know, I know. Teddy Pendergrass was his client. Michael Jackson was his client. They used to call Dr. Sebi the mountain man when he was treating Michael Jackson. Wow. For pain, you know, for the pain that Michael Jackson was going through. Um, uh, sister uh, Left Eye. Yes. Who was in the accident. She was coming from his center in Honduras. Oh no. She was ready to buy land next to his. Oh my God. Okay, so that, you know, Dr. Sebi has been somebody that particularly is of danger because of the role that he plays with the pharmaceutical um, agencies. Because if people understood exactly how straightforward it is to heal yourself. This is dangerous you're talking, brother. You're talking big, you're talking about a multi-billion dollar business. This is dangerous, brother. And this is, but then again, the, the bottom line is, is that um, I don't speak truth to power because truth is power. 
I speak truth to the lie. And healing yourself is not that difficult, not just for African people, for people in general, but specifically for people of African descent, because as Dr. Sabi will tell you, one of the important things to understand is the African body is the original body born by the creator who brought us all into existence. And it is through the healing power of the sun that all things come out of exist, all things come into existence through the sun. We are pieces of the sun. Each. And so the biominerals that Dr. Sebi speaks of comes from this concept. And this is why, you know, brother, my brother investigator, everybody, you know, I, I've, I've always said, uh, keep on keeping on. It ain't over till we win. Yes. It, it's something that has just been something that I say normally uh, at the end of my presentations or even when I'm talking to somebody in the street. Keep on keeping on. Yes, sir. No matter what, keep on keeping on. Yes, sir. And as the, as the brother was talking about Usain Bolt and running and the idea of coming together and working together as a people. That's what this is about. Keep on keeping on. That's what it means. Mm. Okay. We all may not make it because when you speak truth and you begin to unravel the complications of the world that we're living in, you become a threat. And Malcolm once told us the price of freedom sometimes is death. Mm. But where you leave the community at that point is where they pick up. It's like when you're running a relay race. Okay, Nipsey Hussle began something. Brother joined the ancestors, Nick Cannon picked it up. Yes. So no matter what may happen to us, when you pass the baton to the younger generation, things happen. Yes. But the other piece that I've added to what I say when I say keep on keeping on, it ain't over till we win, is now I say solar power is the future wealth of the planet. Come on, brother. Open the doors now, King. It's all yours. Teach us now, my soldier. And I'm saying to us as, as a people, that isn't it interesting where the sun shines the brightest, the people are the most melanated. One more time, sir. Say that one more time. Isn't it interesting? If solar power is that power that brings all things into existence, isn't it interesting that wherever the sun shines the brightest, the people are the most melanated? It is as if the creator has put our wealth in our own backyard and said, here it is. There'll be no heirs you can put at the end of your name. No millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire. That's not how you'll be able to measure wealth through solar power. You're gonna to have to change how you're going to categorize your, your, your wealth. We're gonna to have to redefine what wealth is. And so it becomes important. And um, I would like to dedicate today's discussion to the West Side Leadership Academy. I'd like to dedicate that specifically to West Side. But in general, I'd like to leave us with an understanding of exactly what my presentation is going to begin to enlighten us to. Brother, it's, it's, it's funny that you said that, brother, because before you came on the platform, so you have no idea. Um, just as the show started, we were advised that um, one of our West Side young boys lost his father today. Mm. So it's, and we dedicated the show to the West Side young family and the boy. So it's funny that you just came along and said this, brother. And we thank yeah. you for that dedication. Brothers and sisters, are you ready to hear from our king? And our teacher and our brother. If you're ready, he's already dropped the he's already dropped the gems. He's already started dropping the gems. Drop down in the chat line if you if you want to show the love. Put down rock stone, rock stone to backside. Put down some rock stones, brothers and sisters. Professor Kabar, forgive me. The platform's yours, King. My brother, 
I, I'm allowed to share my screen. It's fine, Bob and Man. We're your servants today, King. You share your screen, soldier. Okay, here we go. I'm excited, brother. We love you, King. Here we go. We love you, brother. What I want to do, family, is I'd like to begin with the concept of the fact that our ancestors already knew what I'm about to talk to you about. They had already codified it. They had already written it down. And I'd like to take you back to the 18th dynasty of Kemet. And I'd like you to begin to get a sense of where I'm going with this. Woo! I'm taking you back to the time of Akhenaten. But in going back, I'm going to propel us forward. I'm not taking you back here to stay in ancient Kemet and Kush. It's like a, a slingshot that you pull back. The purpose of pulling the slingshot back is not to go back. The purpose of the slingshot is to propel forward. And the further you can go back, the further in front of you, you can propel yourself. And so what I am saying is that as we begin this conversation, going back to ancient Kush Kemet, it is not to go back there and stay there. It is to propel ourselves into the future. And there is no future without our children. Our children are our future. And if we give them the wherewithal to be able to understand what economics is, economics comes from the Greek word oikos, O-I-K-O-S. Oikos means your environment or your home. It doesn't mean money. It means your environment, like when you study ecology, okay? Economics is to know your environment, to understand your environment, and to be able to utilize your environment in order to propel your civilization forward into the future with a sense of wealth and the ability. Black folk like good things. We like wealth. We like to dress nice. We like to dance. We like to eat good food. Jamaica on ice, that looked good to me. I was looking at that rice and peas. I was saying, I want some of that right now. Come on. <laughs> we like good things. We're not here to sacrifice. We're not here to give up. We're not here looking for our heaven after we die. Bob Marley say, we want our heaven on earth. And so there is nothing wrong with wealth. There is nothing wrong with supporting West Side Leadership Academy. Brother Mohammed and the, and the investigator in terms of the programs that he's trying to bring forward. It is money that's gonna make that happen. So that it's important that we understand the role that economics plays with us. So I wanna take you back to the Aten text, which is evidence that our ancestors were aware of solar power and the beneficence and the power of the sun and the wealth that it brought to the earth. Unfortunately, we're living amongst the people that don't understand this. And in fact, I've heard them say the sun is your enemy when it comes to melanoma and skin cancer. The less melanated you are, the more prone to skin cancer you are. They hide from the sun. They hide from the very nature of what brought them into existence, whereas African folk call themselves children of the sun. So, you know, something's got to be up as it relates to our understanding of solar power. Right now, they're trying to figure out how to harness the money that can be made from solar power, but they can't because the sun is in all of our presence. And if we understood how to harness the power of the sun, then we would bring an energy system to our planet. You hear now they're talking about 5G and how airlines are concerned about 5G and how it will mess with their electronics, their computers, their, their, their flying capacity. We're not talking about 3G or 4G or 5G. We're talking about raw G. 
the natural energy that no, brings all didn't life say forward. that. You did not go there, brother. Raj, oh, yes. Lick shot from Babylon. <laughs> Raji. That's the God. That's what G stands for. Raji. They may not tell you that. But the real G stands for the energy. And we'll get into it as we go through this conversation today, because I'm going to take you to the past and I'm going to propel you into the future, just like a slingshot. So allow me to uh, allow me to allow you to think. That's all I ask. I'm not asking you to believe a word I say. I'm just saying, think, family. Think about where we're headed. Think about what we have to do. We ain't got no friends. So we better do this on our own. And there's a way to do it. Because I'm not just here saying about we need some. Because, you know, when you need somebody's help to accomplish a mission, you're not free. We may be going all out here looking for other people to give us this and give us that and help us here and help us there. But if that's our mindset, we are not free because if they did not help us, we would not accomplish our goal. The only time you are equal with somebody else is when you can take care of yourself and your family and your people. That's the only type of respect I'm looking for. To come to the table fully prepared and equal to anybody that sits across from the table. We're not negotiating for your help. You're negotiating for mine. The Kush Kemet scholars created a sacred yet scientific allegory, story, analogy concerning day and night, light and darkness, life and death, and other complementary forces. The Aten text is a sacred science based in an allegory. The African scribes of this analogical story distinctly elaborated on the awesome power of the sun in a self-created nation state with secure political boundaries and economic stability. This is our brother Akhenaten. Family, I'd like to take you there, but I can't today because I got too much to say, but this is the historical figure upon which the Abrahamic religions base the story of Moses on. You're looking at Moses right now, family. Can you get to that? This is where Moses came from. And the story that I'm about to tell you is where the entire biblical story of Moses came from. Teach. The sci what, what we're looking at is um, the scientific documentation. Uh, the Aten text is a scientific document regarding photovoltaics. Talking about Dr. Sebi. When, when I was with Dr. Sebi one time, uh, he was talking about this concept called photovoltaics. And I said to Dr. I said, Dr. Sebi, how do you spell photovoltaics? Because I want to do my research. I said, Doctor, how do you spell photovoltaics? And brother said, I don't know. You the teacher, you tell me. And so I went into research and photovoltaics Photo means light. Voltaic means electricity. Photovoltaics is the light that creates electricity. With that, Aten was the name given to the sun during the 18th dynasty. However, Aten has been referred to in earlier Kush history. The text paid tribute to the light, heat, and sound energy carried to earth by the sun's rays. The Aten text praises the beauty, the righteousness, the energy, the brilliance, and eternal majestic power that made the sun all-knowing, all-seeing, and forever present. Have you ever heard those definitions before and who they refer to? Omniscient, all-knowing, all-seeing, and forever present. Omnipotent, all-powerful. This is where the entire Abrahamic faith system comes up out of. 
the concept of that energy that is all knowing, all seeing, all powerful and forever present. That is the sun. But they didn't worship the sun. They worship the creator given ability to create life. The sacred ode, the Aten text, declared the presence of the sun defeated darkness on many different levels. In other words, it wasn't just about night and day. It wasn't just about night and day. It was about ignorance and wisdom. Ignorance being the dark and intelligence being the day, the light. When the sun rose, all of nature, organic life came to life or consciousness. And when the, and when the sun set, all of nature slept or unconscious. The Aten text honored and praised the creator of all that created life and supplied all living things the capacity to reproduce themselves. The ancient Kush, Kushite scholars of the 18th dynasty also gave credit to the sun's rays for providing the living with all the food and nourishment they needed for survival. Before we can get into the text itself, we look at figurative language, which is the metaphor, the analogy. It is the way in which we use words, the metaphor and the simile. The difference between a metaphor and a simile, here's where we go into language arts, West Side Leadership Academy. This is part science, but here's the language arts. Because in order to understand what the text is saying to us, you have to understand the way in which it is written. Just like rap, rap is all figurative language. That's all rap is, figurative language. Okay, brother, uh, uh, Muhammad. Yes, sir. I've heard you say, hey man, I've heard you say sometime that the knowledge being dropped, it, it smelled like doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's smelly, smelly. It's smelly, okay. Figurative language. <laughs> That's what you're using. You're using figurative language in a way that is so powerful. It, it takes something like when we say, oh, that's bad or that's dope. Okay. When you say something is bad, that means it's better than good. But what you've done is you've taken the very nature of what you're saying and turning it around. Figurative language, we use it all the time. It's in the Aten text. And the metaphor and simile, for example, is comparing Aten to the characteristics of the sun. Personification, giving Aten the sun human attributes, like the sun's rays are compared to human hands. The symbol, the sun, the, the science, the visible, the physical, is the neter or the representative for the Aten. Spiritual invisible energy, the rays of the sun. When you foreshadow something, you stand in the present predicting the future. When you flash back, you stand in the present and you reflect on the past. So what I'd like to do is as we move through this process, now that we've got the figurative language in place, the Aten text is a sacred science expressed through figurative language. Kush Kemet scholars created a sacred yet scientific allegory or analogy concerning day and night, light and darkness, life and death and other complementary forces. The African scribes of this analogical story told in figurative language distinctly elaborated on the awesome power of the sun in a self-defeated nation state with secure political boundaries and economic stability. Here is Akhenaten and his family offering gifts to the Aten disc, the sun that you see up here. He's offering gifts. Look at the hands that extend out of the sun's, these are the sun's rays. In other words, 
It's the idea of the metaphor of giving, but not just that. The right hand gives and the left hand receives. Look at the hands. Some are right-handed, some are left-handed. And our ancestors distinctly wanted to show here, look at this ray here that's coming down out of the sun with an unk, life for the nose of Akhenaten. Here, with the figure behind Akhenaten offering gifts, look, you see life, the ankh being brought to the nose. Life is giving and receiving. And this is what our ancestors were saying in figurative language. The idea of these hands, the rays of the sun giving life, but also what this story is saying is according to how you live your life, you also reciprocate life to the sun by how you live on the earth. And right now, family, our sun is not happy with the way some human beings are conducting themselves. The weather is coming through. The virus is coming through. This is nature talking to us. And if anyone cannot see that nature is talking to us, then we have to stop and think for a while because nature is talking to us. Akhenaten's text. The Aten text was comprised of 125 lines and three fundamental scientific concepts regarding the power and majesty of the light, heat, and sound energy of the sun. Today's world talks about four, five, or even 20 G. Raji is the future wealth of our planet because Ra light is Ra bright. Brothers and, yes. sisters, brothers and sisters, I want us from tonight to take that word and make it go viral. This is Professor Kabar teaching us Raji. We're gonna make this word famous for you, brother. Thank you. I, no doubt. And when you make it famous for me, you make it famous for us and you create a promise for our future. Raji, keep your eye beyond what the magician wants you to see. Raji is the power and energy of the sun. I assure you, family, by the end of this presentation, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. That's a promise. Because I carefully prepared this. Chase! I knew I was dedicating it to the children. Chase! You will understand what I'm saying. I'm taking you back now. Remember the slingshot. But I'm not taking you back to Akhenaten's A10 text just to leave you there. Chase! I'm going to show you where we have to propel ourselves into the future. And it's going to be our children and our children's children and their children that's going to take Raji and understand exactly what it means. What is Raji? Concept number one of the Aten text. Aten, the son of our solar system. Aten was unique, universal, and supplied bountiful love for all of her, his creation. Go fam, we got to get up off this uh, God is a man. God is a divine combination of both the male and the female energy in the cosmic universe. Teach! Ain't nobody going nowhere. I've often said that if you think you're going to go into a, a, a war and women do not play a distinct part of that war, Teach! that ain't no war, that's a fist fight. If you're going to go to war, you better have the sister with you 100%. Not in front of you, not behind you, not above you or below you, beside you. Brothers and sisters, if you're feeling, brother, what he just said, put down amen. 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 Ah. Hallelujah, brother. Teach. All of our tense creations had the potential to be good and beautiful. Concept number two, every living creation was a divine expression of the creator. 
and their nature created an instinct that made them obedient to the internal will of the creator within. The only creation that did not live by instinct was humanity. However, when conscious of their consciousness, they acquire intuition, which is a divine variation of instinct. Each creation survived and thrived, basking in the energy of Aten's light, heat, and sound energy in their own very special and unique way. Concept number three, the world during the 18th dynasty was one of natural beauty, trust, power, and societal wealth. The people of these times lived in a fertile, prosperous, peaceful, and safe environment. Now, family, just think of that. Think of the world that we're living in now. Think of our daily lives. Think of the struggles, the trials, and the tribulations. And think of an African nation by, of, and for Black people that had natural beauty, internal trust, absolute power, and everybody had wealth. Everybody didn't have the same wealth, but nobody went to bed hungry. Everybody had clothes. We always had our, our, a house to live in. And medical, well, we followed what Dr. Sabi tells us today. So, so many of us did not necessarily get the illnesses that we get today. Think of living in a fertile, prosperous, peaceful, and safe environment. Think of being able to go outside and know that your grandma, or your grandpa is safe out in the community. Know that your children will not be abducted or hurt or mistreated. That the school is a safe place to send your child, that they are going to do the very best for them hey. and not try to miseducate them. Teach. Think of what your mind must have been like. Think of how you must have got up and lived your life under these conditions, because it's really kind of hard living the lives that we live today and stop for a moment and fathom what it is to have natural beauty, trust in each other, power over yourself, and a wealth that allows you to meet all of your obligations in your lifetime. And that the land around you, your economics is fertile, prosperous, peaceful, and safe. The 18th dynasty, also called the New Kingdom, they ruled for over 250 years. This one family alone ruled for 250 years. Quite a thought. The Aten text, the great Aten text was found on the Western wall of the tomb. This is where the evidence of this text is now. This isn't just somebody talking about it. It was on the Western wall of the tomb of the court official named I, believed to be the grandfather of Akhenaten and the great grandfather of who we call King Tut. That's what it looks like. That's the Aten text on I's wall. I want to show you the evidence of what I'm talking about. I, I just don't come to you with this without showing you evidence of it. This is what the Aten text looks like in Kush Kemet on the wall of Ai's tomb. Now I'm using the translation by Dr. Theofalio Benga, brilliant Congolese scholar, mentor and friend of Dr. Shekanta Diop from his book, the African philosophy, the pharaonic period, 2780 to 330 BCE. Family, if you don't have it, this book should be in your library. It is 125 lines, but I've divided it into 15 sections through my interpretation. It's 125 lines divided into 15 sections. 
Section number one, line one to 12, it talks about the impact that the sun has on the earth when it rises in the east. Section number two talks about what happens in the absence of Aten or the sun. What happens when the sun sets in the west? Lines 13 to 23 talk about this. Number three, Aten rises from line 24 to 28. What happens when the sun rises again or resurrection? So you see how they began it? They, 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 they talked about the sun, then they talked about its setting, and now they're talking about it rising. This is the way in which they're developing their storyline with us. Section number four, the impact of Aten on his, her creations. What does nature do during the day when the sun is present? That's what it talks about. What does nature do during the day? Now, family, I've got presentations on this and where I go through all the lines, but because of what I want to do with us today, I don't have the, I don't have the time to be able to go through each line. That's for the future. I just want you to be able to see it and get a sense of it so we can go into the future. Section five, Aten embryology. Now, it is through lines 45 to 55 where they talk about the sun's impact on the creation of organic life on earth. Now, family, you can't do this unless you have microscope. What they're actually saying in this part of the, of, of the text, you could not tell unless you had some form of knowing the microscopic world. However, they had that concept in their science laboratories. They knew sperm, they knew the female egg, and they knew what happened because of the fertilization of the egg. They tell you what's going on. This is some mighty powerful science going on here, family. Here, they talk about the cackler where they do a comparison of life in gestation. In other words, when a, an organism is coming into life and whether it's in the human who is 10 months in gestation during uh, embryology, but what they did is that they, they compared the human to the chicken egg. And they talked about how the chicken egg and the egg of the universe and the egg of the humans and the animals are all the same. And that how a chick comes into existence is how a human comes into existence, is how the earth came into existence, is how the sun came into existence, is how the cosmos came into existence. Now tell me if that's not him. Now with that, if I can ask you, can I get an Amin Ra behind that? <laughs> hey, teach! That's who our ancestors were. The great Aten. They're telling you what the sun is doing. They're telling you about solar power. They're telling you what the power of the sun has done on the earth. Section seven, all and everything are 10 created. Now here's where they talk about melanin. They don't call it melanin, but in these lines, they talk about all the things created by the light, heat, and sound energy of the sun, visible and invisible. It's just a powerful piece of writing. But when other people interpret it that don't know our culture, they see it almost like a, a religious document. While it is spiritual, but it's scientific. Aten's humanity. How does sun impact it? The geographical locations on the earth. They talk about how the sun is responsible for the many different and distinct colors of people on the earth. That's melanin. 
they talk about the fact that in these individuals having distinct features, they also have their own language and also botany. Botany, this is what Dr. Sebi was about. Dr. Sebi said ginseng is good for people in Korea because the sun created ginseng in the geographic location where Korea is. And what Dr. Sebi was saying is that in Africa and to the African body, there are things like ginseng, but they're not ginseng because the sun impacted Africa differently than the sun impacted the geographic location of Korea. So while ginseng is good for the Korean body, it may not be good for the African body. And so what Dr. Sabi and Sister Ma'ana are doing is that they brought forward an African biomineral process of living, where when I took Maya today, it was good for my blood. When I took Bolo, it was for my immune system. When I took T1, T1 is the hormone for men. It's, it's, the, it's what you take when you're a man. H1 is what you take for a woman to balance your hormones. So when young ladies are going through puberty, young men are going through puberty. I know I've been around them for years. I've been around 11, 12, and 13 year olds. And my goodness gracious, when, when they get into puberty and their hormones start to rage, some of them want to crawl, walk, run, swim, fly. And some of them want to do it all at the same time. But with a balancing of the hormones, you see, in Africa, we would have had the food to eat that balanced our hormones, so we wouldn't be going buck wild crazy. We would also respect physical relationships where we would understand because we had the right to pass programs that the young men were taught, uh, uh, were taught what a man is. Young ladies were brought out with the sisters and they were taught what is a woman. And one of the things that we would tell the young brothers is every temple door that opens for you, you may not wanna go in. And what the sisters would tell the young sisters is you don't wanna let everybody who knocks on your temple door in. So be careful who you associate with and who you allow yourself to become involved with and what you do with that person. Our ancestors knew how to train and teach the children how to conduct themselves. Number nine, happy and do what? Do what? Do what is the afterworld. Happy in the body, land and cosmos, the waters hydrogen and the relationship of the original waters of the universe, but as important is the waters that make you up. We are the original plasma, water. In the future, family, Google the word plasma physics. Plasma physics. And you will also understand the Aten text. Section 10, Happy on Earth and Sky, discusses the multi-referential gifts of water to all creation. 11, the true believers of our 10. While unknown and unseen, the light, heat, and sound energy of the sun is still appreciated and respected by those who know the creative forces of the sun's rays, including the divine human in the form of Neset Biti, or the Pharaoh. <clears throat> We are the Pharaoh. Each and every one of us is Pharaoh or the divine human. It's not just one person. And this implies the knowledge of spiritual energy, although unknown and unseen. So many of our ancestors who were captured, stolen, kidnapped, and held in bondage in the African diaspora, so many lost touch with their ancestral knowledge. So sorry to cut you just there. Could you, I've just got a couple of people asking you to go back a slide real quick. Could you go back one? 
There's, is that the one? Yes, sir. That's the one. Thank you so much. Okay. This is section 10. Happy on earth and sky. And here, lines 89 to 94, they talk about the multi-referential, the many different levels of gifts of water to all creation. Um, 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 brother, um, um, professor, just want to, yeah. um, Dr. Mark, is, sorry, I've got Mark Richards on the line. So is it Dr. Mark Richards? I just want to know, is, and there's a reason why I'm asking you this, but I have a quick drink. Dr. Mark, is that you? Doctor, is that Dr. Mark Richards with us on this, on this, on this link? Just want a quick check. Dr. Mark, is that you, Dr. Mark Richards? Because if it is, um, brother, uh, professor, he's, he's, and I'm hoping it is this brother, he's one of the top black physicists in the UK. Okay. And um, I, 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 I will check, I will come back to you, brother, if it's him, I'll, I'll, because he's, he's a powerful support of your work, you know, and um, I've just seen that he's logged in. So um, I'll get back to you on that. But brother, carry on, brother, teach. Wow. Well, much regard to our doctor, welcome aboard. Um, and I'd be very interested in your thoughts and comments about what we're talking about today. I know that you have so much to share with us and, and, and to refine and, and define much of what we're talking about here. Uh, well, was it all right for me? Uh, is it all right to go on now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm talking to Lady Ma'at. Oh, you were talking to me, sir, but yes, it's fine for you to go. <laughs> okay, please, may I ask you who you are? Jurita. Hey, Jurita. you forgot me already, huh? My bad, Jurita. I know you now. I'll never make that mistake again. All right, sir. Okay. And here is number 11. We've, we've already done this one. 12. Our 10 sets in Westland. Lines 100 to 104. Remember, we got 125 lines. The respect of all life through the rising, setting, and resurrecting sun. The solar power. The respect of all life through the rising, the setting, and the resurrecting sun. In other words, the cycle of life. That the sun brings forward and allows on our earth. Akhenaten. The greatness of consciousness is when the divine human knows the creator within all. Now that's important, family. The greatness of consciousness is when the divine human knows the creator within all. Because if you understood that you were the creator having a human experience, then you would regard and respect the creator's creations, knowing that the creator exists within it. You know, we talk about, when I say we, I'm speaking in general, but there are people that talk about loving God, but they mistreat nature. When you mistreat nature, you're mistreating God because Science is the study of nature, and nature is the essence of the creator or God, Allah, Yahweh, whatever form we would like to call that name. There is only one. There is only one. Even if you claim to be agnostic and atheist, science still is your creator. It's all spiritual. And from lines 114 to 125, they end it. Aten's eternal home, the final praise for the creator of all, the light, heat, and sound energy of the sun coming in the form of the rays of sunlight, solar power coming in the form of the rays of sunlight, light, heat, and sound energy, Ra-Ji. But now, now that I pulled you back, now it's time to propel ourselves forward. Solar power is the future wealth of our planet. How do we teach solar power, the Aten text, as it applies to the present? It's all right to go back there. We've gone back there. 
But we went back there to propel ourselves into the future and prepare our earth. Because what we're living in right now, family, and I dare not speak of other places, I'm just saying what we're experiencing, I think that the patients have taken over the insane asylum. I think people who know not the way are in control and they're leading our earth and the people on it and the animals and the water and the earth off a precipice. And it's up to us. We can blame everybody we want. I understand that, but nature's looking at us. Nature's saying to us, uh, but y'all know better. So why are you letting this happen? You know, you can point your finger at other people, but you know them. You know where they come from. You know how they act. So why are we sitting here acting like we surprised? Dr. Clark would have said, I'm surprised that you surprised. It is Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, who we celebrated his, his birth on Sunday, who quoted Dante's Inferno where it says the hottest part of hell is reserved for those who knew better, but just stood by and watched. The hottest part of hell ain't even reserved for the people doing all the bad things. <laughs> Teach, brother. And this is where the concept of strength and dignity and respect, we know better. And we know what can make us do what we have to do. West Side Leadership Academy and all of the other academies in UK, in Europe, for African people, here in the United States, in the Caribbean, that is investing in the future. The future isn't just tomorrow for us. I got a 100-year plan. I'm looking five generations down the road. Preparing our children, parents, and community for the 21st century. Culture, curricula, and consciousness. Looking towards tomorrow, today, from yesterday. That's what we're doing. Now, listen to this, family. In this century, the 21st century, we will harness the power of the stars, the energy source of the gods or the Neteru. In the long term, it means harnessing the power of fusion and even solar energy from outer space. Further advances in physics will usher in the age of magnetism whereby cars, trains, and even skateboards will float through the air on a cushion of magnetism. Family, they're already doing this right now. China is already doing this right now. There are scientific principles that allow this to happen. Are we teaching our children this? Because if we're not, we're not preparing them for the 21st century. I pause only to give you time to think about what I just said. We're thinking, brother, we're thinking. If this is the first time that you thought about the age of magnetism, where car, they, they're already doing it, by the way. You see cars that can, that you don't need to even have your, 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 your hands on the steering wheel now. I, I know in the car that I have, and I, I have a 2015 car that if a car is too close to me on either side, a light will show on that side of the car, which means that my car is somehow magnetized to be able to pick that up. Somehow there's a relationship between my physical car and that physical car that tells me we're too close to each other. It's already happening. This is not something that we're saying is like science fiction for the future. They're already doing this. Skateboards the same way. You're going to float through the air on a cushion of magnetism. 
But here's what I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> There's a brilliant scholar. His name is Dr. Michu Kaku. He wrote a book called um, The Future of Physics. And in this, he talks about the four types of civilizations. And he says that a civilization is only as great or not great as the source of their energy. And he outlines four different levels of energy. Number one, the lowest form is Earth's energy, where you depend on water, oil, and wind, etc. The second is that when you've used the Earth's ability, you then create the second type of civilization, which is a sun energy, which depends on light, heat, and sound energy from the sun. That is why the pyramids were built. That's how far back. Our awareness. Now, I took you up to the 18th dynasty, which was, you know, a thousand something years after the pyramids were built. But our ancestors, I use that only because of the, of the physical evidence that I have. The other, of course, is my book on Shabaka Stone, where I outline all of this. And I explain how in Spirituality Before Religions, my second book, all of the books I wrote is leading towards this because family, I'm about the future. But I know the only way to be able to go into the future is what you do in the present to understand your past. And so that's why we went back to Aten text, back to Shabaka stone in order to propel ourselves to where I wanna take you for the remainder of this presentation. When you get Raji, the sun's energy, when you get that, then all of a sudden, imagine what it would be like if we, through Raji, could have that type of power. Imagine if we then could use our sun as a satellite to tap into the galactic solar power, which means that every one of us could have our own sun to derive our energy. Do you know what type of power you have? If the sun could take care of all of us, imagine if each and every one of us had our own sun. Now I'm gonna show you where I believe our ancestors had tapped into galactic energy. That's where I think they were going. And then after you tap into having your own sun, then you tap into cosmic energy. The galactic energy depends on the millions of stars of the Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy. But once you get into our galaxy and you have your own star, then you have cosmic energy, which then depends on the, and I put the word trillions of stars, but we don't even know how many stars there are. We don't even know how you can count infinity trillions of stars of the cosmos. So if we all get all happy with Raji solar power, imagine if each of us had our own sun that we could get our energy from. Do you know what you could do with that? Is, is there an imagination so far that you can imagine? Can you imagine in our classrooms where you give children this, top, uh, this type of concept, take them through these steps, and then just let their imagination, don't even have to teach them, just say, what do you think you could do with that type of power? What could you do with galactic energy? What could you do with cosmic energy? I even ask us as adults, what do you think we could do? If we could keep our lights on, use our, our stoves to cook food, refrigerator to, to, uh, uh, to put our food in, computer, everything we're doing right now is dependent on energy. Even my talking to you depends on energy. And that's only like, we're depending on fossil fuel for the most part to, to run our cars. So you can see the type of power that you could have, but we'll continue. Let's look at energy level number one. Remember, and. Remember that energy there? 
the earth energy. Let's go back now. Let's look at energy relying on the living earth for energy. Here's how we break up. Today, our planet uses fossil fuels in the form of oil, natural gas, and coal. The world consumes about 14 trillion watts of power. In that 14 trillion, 33% comes from oil. 25% comes from coal. 20% from gas. 7% from nuclear power. 15% from biomass and hydroelectric water. You know, water power. Water electricity. Hydro. Hydro meaning water. And 0.5% from solar and renewables. And the reason why it's 0.5 is because the folk that run things haven't figured out a way how to make money on solar power. But you can't make money on solar power. Because solar power, once you do your solar panels, that's it. You got solar power. You don't have to pay Con Ed any more money. Con Edison is the company of energy here. I don't know what you call it in UK. What do you call your energy companies in UK? Boy, there's, there's several of them, brother. There's several of them. They're all teeths. All teeth in us right now, brother. <laughs> give me a name so that, the, so that the community can make the comparison. Just give me a name of one company. British Gas. British Gas, okay. We have Con Ed. Okay. They're trying to figure out how to make money off of energy, but you can't when you deal with the sun because the sun stand in everybody's backyard. You don't have to dig for the fossil fuels. You don't have to dig for the natural gas. You don't need that, that kind of coal uh, energy because the sun shines on everybody. Rich and poor, like Bob Marley say, when it rain, it don't rain on one man house alone. 0.5% from solar and renewables because they can't make money. They make the most money from oil. But here comes the sun. All energy comes from the sun. Even oil and coal are concentrated sunlight representing the energy that fell on plants and animals millions of years ago. What, what make your car run is dinosaurs and plants of the past. Solar cells operate by converting sunlight directly into electricity. Here we go, family. Solar cells operate by converting sunlight directly into electricity. I have a lesson plan coming up in a couple of months that's gonna tell you, black folk, we folk, that we are solar cells. African human beings melanated are solar cells. The exact thing that solar cells do on buildings to bring energy is the same thing happens to humans when you take a walk in the sun. You are solar cells. You are walking, living solar cells. When a, and also keep in mind, cause I'm a night person. Keep in mind also that solar power comes at night through the stars, not just during the day with our sun, because remember, galactic power is not just our sun, it's the Milky Way galaxy. There is power at night too. Not just during the day, but at night too. When a particle of light or a photon hits a metal, it kicks out an electron creating an electrical current. And that is the, the essence. When a particle of light hits your body, not a metal, but your body, it kicks out an electron that creates a current that is your spark of life. And by the way, since everybody want to go out, of, go out into space now, family, once you get past the sun, you hear everybody tell you everything gets black. Guess what? The sun is black energy. You cannot see the sun in free space. When you go up in space, you can't see the sun. It's black. The sun is only visible when gross matter is involved like the Earth's atmosphere or the surface of the moon. In space, you can see the moon and the Earth, but you cannot see the sun. And the stars, they are only visible from the Earth. In space, you can see material objects, 
but you cannot see the source of light. In all actuality, there is no light years in space because there is no light. That means the light you see from distant stars isn't a thousand years away. It could be only hours or minutes, according to how you understand your consciousness. Melanated people are able to transmit energy from the sun's rays and use it for good effects. Family, the evidence of that, we still hear. For us to be able to transmit energy from the sun's rays and use it for good effects, what we're doing right now between UK and US, the United Kingdom and the United States, these are scientific principles that we never thought about, concepts that have never been introduced to us. For out of darkness came the light. There's no concept of the speed of light, the real speed of light isn't the fastest thing that exists. Because wherever light goes, darkness is already there. Darkness is the fastest thing in the cosmic universe. For all of our children, this is what I would want them to know. The first thing that we can do with our children right now is teach them the parts of the sun. Simple. The corona, chromosphere, photosphere, convective zone, radiative zone, and the core, our sun. Start there. A solar cell panel. A solar cell panel, solar electric panel, photovoltaic module, or just solar panel, is an assembly of photovoltaic cells mounted in a framework for ins installation. Solar panels use sunlight as a source of energy to generate direct current electricity. Remember what I told you about a solar panel and a solar cell. You are a solar cell. Everything I'm telling you about what we put on our buildings is exactly what I'm saying about you as a human being. You are a living solar panel. Solar panels are black because black attracts and captures light, heat, and sound rays or energy. Um, um, Professor Cabal? Yes, brother. Oh, brother, this is this is just so beautiful, UT. Brother, um, I, I can bear witness that um, Dr. Mark Richards, Dr. Mark Richards, can you just unmute yourself, please? This is the brother I was telling you about. That is literally, brother, and it's so beautiful that you chose this subject tonight, and this brother's come on, come on tonight, but he's the top black physicist in the UK working at the Imperial College. Dr. Mark, are you there? Uh, yes, greetings, Andrew. Greetings, Brother Andrew. Gre greetings, Professor Kabar. Um, excellent, excellent presentation. Um, just basically reinforcing, um, yeah, what, what, what at least some of us have known for a long time. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Brother, because I, I, I look to scholars as yourself to guide me in my work. Well, I think, uh, I think, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. We all, all, in a way, we're all, we're only just signposts, just like anything. We point, we, we point the way, but that we never stop at the sign, right? We, 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 uh, uh, we can point in the right direction. And I think you're doing a, a wonderful job of, of also um, bringing a cohesiveness um, because many of us are specialists in different fields. And sometimes, um, you know, the masses, we could lose them in the in the technical side, but there's always a message behind all of that. And I think you've done a fantastic job of conveying that message, uh, which, which well, you know, we can all resonate with. So you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, solar power, funnily enough, um, back in my, you know, when I was doing my PhD and so on, we used to, we worked on what was called, you know, the solar constant, which was basically the average amount of energy per square meter that which emanates from the sun. And it was, uh, it, it's about 3.7 kilowatts per meter square. Now, if you think about that as the average amount of energy that hits the earth per meter square, just to give you some context, think about a 100 watt bulb mm. uh, and then think about 37 of them um, all within one square meter. Mm. And you have that amount of energy across the entire earth just from the sun. So you're absolutely right. We don't, we don't even tap into just even a fraction 
of what's potentially available. And I think in the future, that's definitely um, what, what what's going to uh, uh, really, really elevate us. And, and you're right. We as a people, uh, we are sun people, <laughs> uh, for want of a better. And so uh, we, we absolutely want to uh, re rediscover, reevaluate and reconnect, you know, our relationship with the sun, not just uh, for, for, for those sort of spiritual aspect, but also, like, like you said, the actual uh, sort of technical, uh, the, the power, the energy uh, that, it, that, it, that it gives. We can harness, we can harness that energy. And, and as, as we know, energy can't be created or destroyed. So um, if we take energy in one form, we can channel that into another form. Mm. And the sun is a great source. Wow. Wow. Brothers and sisters, can wow. you hear what's going on today? Professor Kabar with Dr. Mark Richards, our top physicist in the UK. This is phenomenal. Wow. Take wow. Wow. I just so appreciate uh, Dr. Richards' um, uh, information because this is what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, I educate, I teach, I study this, but it's those who are the physicists that will take this to the next level that will take what I'm saying and refine it and shape it like a sculpture does. You know, a sculptor takes materials and just shapes it. Mm. And that's what we have to do for our children. We, we have to shape this to, to help them understand the dynamics of what the future holds for them because our schools are not preparing. As a college professor, I know mm. I had a student that was a double major, African-American studies, and electrical engineering. And when she graduated, she could only find a job as a secretary in a veterinarian hospital. Absolutely. Now, I don't have a problem with a secretary. My mother was a secretary. Secretaries are very necessary and are the backbone of any organization. But if you've studied electrical engineering as one of your majors, you should be able to find a job in that area. Well, absolutely, I, I I definitely agree with that, um, and I, and it's a problem. It's 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 been a problem for for decades. You can talk about maybe even like during the Windrush generation, where there were actually you know qualified people who came over who had to do relatively menial jobs or labouring jobs when they actually had you know they were teachers or engineers etc. as well. So it's partly about society and how how we are perceived by society. But I, I sometimes want to sometimes look at it and turn it inwards and say, well, okay, we have uh, engineers amongst us, black engineers, physicists, doctors, scientists, all sorts. And we're, we're you know, and many, some of us have, have work, you know, have jobs. Some of us may not have the job we want, but I often ask, when do we actually use those skills to actually help solve some of our own problems within, whether it be technical or otherwise within the community, once we start using those skills, to solve our own problems, then I think uh, that's where we'll really make the impact. I don't think we necessarily learned those skills just to simply, you know, get a job to support others. I think there must be a part that says those skills you have, how can I use that to help empower my community? Because all the other cultures do the same thing. So, uh, so, so that's that's where I think to me the mindset is: yes, there's always going to be issues trying to get a, you know, the right kind of work out there. But I also think, what kind of work can I do for my community now that I have these skills? How can I help in some way? And if we all think about that collectively, I think it can be a really powerful impact. I think you're absolutely correct, Doctor, uh, uh, because once you understand that, you can always apply your skills on your own in your own way and not exactly. depend on anybody for anything. That's right. And so we want to, and we also, as a community, want to create more opportunities for us to harness those skills as well. Um, so, so yeah, I'm all for, for, you know, almost like, you know, the Garveyite sort of um, ethos, you know, do for self. What can we do for self? That's it. That Absolutely. Exactly it. Absolutely. Anyway, like I said, I, I'm only passing through and this is an excellent presentation. I certainly don't want to uh, encroach too much on it, but uh, respect Brother Andrew for, for inviting me on at such short notice. And, and I'm certainly um, absolutely um, really, really, um, if you like, overwhelmed by, by the fact that now some of the real technical side of what's happening in science is starting to permeate within uh you know within within our community so that we can now start to really get involved and uh there was actually uh 
uh, I'll leave with a final uh, quote from Abdus Salam, who was a, a Nobel laureate, and he was also a, a, a mentor of uh, James Sylvester Gates, who's one of the top uh, black, well, one of the top founding fathers of string theory. But he's a, he's an African American string theorist, theoretical physicist. But Abdus Salam said to him uh, many many years ago that if you can reach a critical mass of black physicists then you will create something like jazz in the physics world because that's what we do <laughs> okay we're getting musical now that's exactly it <laughs> exactly level and so we'll do the equivalent same, right. same way twice right and if you think about it within jazz you improvise you you know and, and all those things all that flavor if we start putting it into some of the technical things we do we'll take things on another level there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And in so many different ways, we're doing it as we speak. Absolutely. In so many ways. And, and that's what we're really, because, you know, Dr. Richards, my background is in education, particularly early childhood. And right. I see now that we have to get this technical aspect out here. We have got to get our children mm. un understanding the fundamentals yeah. of what, what they call STEM. That's I like to call STEAM. That's right. Because you can have your science, your technology, your engineering, and your math. But everything mm. that we know about every ancient civilization, we know because of their arts. Right. Well, you know, the funny thing is, I even take it a step further and condense all that steam down to ice. Okay. Inno innovation, culture, and enterprise. Wow. Okay. You I'll get what I'm saying? And just put it all together. We need all that. So it starts from STEM. You need that STEM to sort of underpin it, you know, so we can innovate. And we know that our culture and creativity is part of uh, what you do, what we do. Uh, and then the enterprise, we can't be naive enough to realize that you need the enterprise. We need to start owning more of what we create. Um, and so and that's what will empower our people. So, so, yeah, so it all condenses down to that in the end. Whichever route you get in through it, whether it's through STEM or through the arts or some other means, in the end, as a, as a people, if we can do those things, you know, innovate, create, and and, and enterprise, entrepreneurship, uh, and can put those together, then I think um, there's very little that can really, you know, stop or defeat us. Brothers yeah. and sisters, you're listening to a wow. conversation of two supreme scientists. Pure love. Thank you very much, Dr. Mark. But this is a conversation of two scientists. Brothers and sisters, show some love, man. Show some love. Oh, oh. I got to show some love here now because I appreciate this. And I, I was taking notes as doctor was talking. I've, I've got innovate culture and, <laughs> and enterprise. I've taken notes here now. Absolutely. But we all have that. We, we know from on a personal level and a collective level, you know, uh, we, 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 we all got a bit of that. And we should we should, you know, like uh, really start to connect the dots, so to speak, so that we can really make those paradigm shifts that we've been uh, uh, that the, the we're, we're, we're expecting. There's no doubt. There's no doubt, doctor. And when we bring this to our children, to the West Side Academy there. Absolutely. And other schools such as this, when we start to infuse this in kindergarten, because my background is in early childhood, kindergarten. I, I'm a kindergarten. Yeah, because I mean, well, the, fun, the, the funny thing is, if you ask any, most scientists, ask them when did they become interested in science, it's usually at an early age. Mm. Yes. Now, the thing is, we're no different within our community. Many of our young people are interested in science and engineering and so on. But for some reason, the schooling system over here t almost can tend to beat it out of you. Yes. Almost make you think that you don't really, you're not interested in it anymore. Uh, and so uh, that's more the system's problem than our, you know, our, our actual intrinsic interest in it. So it's definitely, science is definitely something we've always done through the ages. Um, but sometimes society makes us feel like it's not really for us or somehow we're not quite good enough. But that's that's a, that's a that's trying to be de defined by other people's perceptions as opposed to knowing our true um, self and our true worth. Yes. Absolutely. But, but yeah, no, absolutely. And, and so thank you for inviting me. And and 
as I said, Professor Kabar, this has been a really enlightening talk. I mean, I was just sitting there taking it, in, you know, taking in the lecture, and I was I was actually just you know taking it in as a student. Um, and then, you know, and it was only Brother Andrew perhaps brought, brought me in, but but I, I wasn't actually prepared to say anything about this because it was, you know, it was perfect in the way that it was uh, and, and really translating, uh, giving an insight into how technical uh, things are, but also how, um, you know, how we can actually understand that and what that means to us as a people. Because uh, the final quote is, is, is the Marcus Garvey quote, which I always uh, uh, like to refer to, where he says that, you know, where he, he said to his parents that you should teach your children the higher developments of science for within science and religion stands our only hope of withstanding the evil designs of modern materialism. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if we don't uh, get to grips with this, this technical era that we're in, we'll become slaves to it. Absolutely. Again. Absolutely. And our motto is, if it is to be, it's up to me. Each and every one of us takes the responsibility of ourselves and what we have and what the divine gift that we've been given. That's and right. To the children. Every African civilization that I have studied, the purpose of the adult population was to ensure that the children did better than them. Absolutely. That's Not like them. I don't want my children to be like me. I want them to be better than me. I want them to take it to the next level. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely. And, and in, indeed, um, I can see why you're, you're, you're you know, such a, a fine teacher, because that's that's what a true teacher wants. They want their students to actually go further than what they have taught. That's, yes. that's that that shows real, real progress. So um, absolutely. And that's what we want for our young people to go further. You know, as they say, if they have stood on, the, if you have seen further, it's because you've stood on the shoulders of giants. So we want to make sure that, you know, they can stand on the generations before and go further than we, we, we've been before. Absolutely. 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 So, Brother Andrew, I, I'm going to hand it back over to you because uh, I, I could talk, we could wax lyrical uh, pretty much all, all evening, but um, I'm uh, sure you have a, an agenda and a program to, to, to um, try and uh, reconfigure. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, brother. It's an honor to have you say a few oh, wow. words. Hey, Professor Kabar. Yes. Wow. Wow, just a great appreciation. Um, when I woke up this morning, I did not realize that this was going to be the day that it has become. So I just thank you for this opportunity and just sharing this information, Dr. Richards, and I look forward to the future. Together, we're going to make this happen. It ain't over till we win. It's just a matter of us putting all of this in place and move forward with this. So thank you for all that you uh, participate, and I'm honored that you would uh, feel of my work the way you do. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you. Thank you. As you said, we either win or we learn. There we go. That's it. That's, That's it. it. <laughs> Winners never lose. They either That's win right. or, learn. or learn. So that the next time they do it, they're going to win. That's right. <laughs> thank you, my brother. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, brother Andrew, for uh, inviting me on as well. No Take care. So, wow. Okay. Now that was a boost. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Fantastic, okay. brother. Fantastic. Phenomenal. 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 Um, the idea that we're presenting here, photovoltaics, PV. A collection of PV modules is called a PV panel, and a system of PV panels is called an array. Arrays of a photovoltaic system supply solar electricity to electrical equipment. That is what it would look like. It's black because it attracts and captures the light, heat, and sound energy of the sun. One of the things I learned when you do television programs, they tell you never wear white or beige, always wear dark colors because the light in the studio is absorbed by your clothing. Whereas if you wear a lighter color, it'll deflect the light. Just science, not personal. Photovoltaics, another example, is the conversion of light into electricity using semiconducting materials that exhibit the photovoltaic effect. Photovoltaic effect is studied in physics, photochemistry, and electrochemistry. 
The photovoltaic effect is used for electricity generation and for photosensors to generate electricity and to sense light, heat, and sound energy. Photo, light, sensors to sense. Want to give you some more pictures of photovoltaics and solar panels. I want to give you an example uh, with Dr. Sebi and photovoltaics and, and how he even came to talk about photovoltaics for us to be able to understand this. He was talking about what's called the three sisters in America. The three sisters in America is what the ancient indigenous people of America would, would grow. Let's say um, uh, squash, corn, and beans. What photovoltaics is, is that when you grow, let's say, I'm not going to be exact here, but let's say you're growing squash. Squash, when grown, draws the electricity of the sun, light, heat, and sound energy that allows a good squash uh, produce for that season. But at the same time that it's enriching the earth for a good squash, it's preparing the earth for the corn season. When the corn season comes, they don't grow squash, they grow corn, but in corn, the electricity that was created by the squash makes the corn a better produce for the season, but at the same time, it gets it ready for the bean. And so that the bean that, is, um, that takes advantage and, and benefits from what the corn did grows a good bean season, but the bean season gets the earth ready to go back to squash. There is an actual symbiotic relationship between the light, heat, and sound energy and crops. What Europeans did when they came to America and other parts of the world is that they had a cash crop. And so what they would do is that they would just grow, let's say cotton, or they would grow one crop because that made money. But in doing that, you destroyed the photovoltaic electricity of the earth. So pretty soon the earth would die out. There was an African-American man that saved America from the land dying out. Name is Dr. George Washington Carver, who brought the earth back to life. He resurrected the earth like Lazarus by planting soy and peanut. And he did other things also. But photovoltaics, there's a symbiotic relationship between light and heat energy and all the creations on the planet. And once we get back into that cycle of life, I believe that Gaia, the living earth will be much happier. Solar panels on rooftops, I knew a young group of, of students in uh, San Francisco that used to create solar panels in attache cases where they would just open up the attache case and it would be light, heat, and sound energy. Solar power is the future wealth of the planet. Sahara Desert is for sale, family. Land grants of large chunks of the Sahara have suddenly become an important topic and investors are already creating massive solar parks in the desert to meet the needs of European consumers. In cities, one might be able to reduce the cost of solar power by covering homes and buildings with solar cells. You'll save money, but the people doing it may not because you won't have to pay no more money or not as much as you were before. This has several advantages, including eliminating the losses that occur during the transmission of power from a central power plant. You know, when you're depending on power from a central location, a nuclear plant or something like that, you have to depend on that. But when you got the solar power panels up on your roof, you don't have to worry about a central. It's been decentralized. The problem is reducing the cost. And that's because everybody doing this, as Dr. Richards was saying, the problem is, is that people trying to make money. So the idea of selling solar power, they got to make money up front because you ain't going to make no money on the back. You know, that's why 
cameras are cheap, but when you're, well, back in the day when you had to take them to a place to have the pictures uh, reproduced, that's where you paid for it. They didn't mind giving you the camera. <laughs> it was what you had to do after that was gonna make them the most money. Fission, nuclear waste. There's two different things we're gonna talk about now. Fission, which is when you separate the atom or the element. And fusion is when you bring it together, you join them. The, this nuclear waste causes problems for two reasons. When you're dealing with fission, the way it's being done in terms of the uranium atom today, and you're separating the atoms. The nuclear waste causes problems because it remains hot even after the reactor has been turned off. If the cooling water is is accidentally shut off, as in Three Mile Island that we experienced here, then the core starts to melt. If this molten metal comes into contact with water, it can cause a steam explosion that can blow the reactor apart, spewing tons of high level radioactive debris into the air. In a worst case, class nine nuclear accident, you would have to immediately evacuate perhaps millions of people out 10 to 50 miles from the reactor. There is a problem of waste disposal also when it comes to fission. Where do we put the waste? That's fission. Nuclear fission versus nuclear fusion. The idea of getting power from separating the atoms versus getting power when you fuse the atoms. While fission power relies on splitting the uranium atom, thereby creating energy and a large amount of nuclear waste, fusion power relies on fusing hydrogen atoms with great heat, thereby releasing vastly more energy with very little waste. Unlike fission power, fusion power unleashes the nuclear energy of the sun. Remember, we still talk about the Aten text and what our ancestors knew, family. But now I'm taking you into the future. I'm taking you and helping us understand what we're experiencing today and what we have to get to our children to help them understand this and make it better. Make it better. I know for a fact that future people that are doing the work that I'm doing will take my work to the next level, just as I hope I took the work of my previous teachers and ancestors to the next level. They will make this better. And our job is to help them make it better. Buried deep inside the hydrogen atom is the energy source of the universe. Fusion power. We're talking about the Aten. The hydrogen atom is the Aten. That's where the word Atum comes from. That's where the word Aten comes from. Atom. Fusion power lights up the sun in the heavens. Fusion power, the power to fuse is the secret of the stars. Now listen to this family. That's why I put this in bold right here. Anyone who can successfully master fusion power will have created unlimited eternal energy and immeasurable wealth. Anyone who can successfully master fusion power will have created unlimited eternal energy and immeasurable wealth. And the fuel for these fusion plants comes from ordinary seawater. Pound for pound, fusion releases 10 million times more energy than gasoline. Okay, family, let me drop the other shoe now. An eight ounce glass of water is equal to the energy content of 500,000 barrels of petroleum. Wow. Do you see what we're talking about here, family? Wow. Wow. Anyone who can master this will have unlimited eternal energy and immeasurable wealth. Pound for pound, 
fusion releases 10 million times more energy than gasoline. An eight ounce glass of water family, you might've drank that just a few moments ago, is equal in energy content to 500,000 barrels of petroleum. Nuclear fusion. Fusion is nature's preferred way to energize the universe. In star formation, a hydrogen-rich ball of gas is gradually compressed by gravity until it starts to heat up to enormous temperatures. When the gas reaches around 50 million degrees or so, which varies depending on the specific conditions, the hydrogen nuclei inside the gas are slammed into one another until they fuse to form number two on the periodic table of elements, which is helium. In the process, vast amounts of energy are released, which causes the gas to ignite more precisely. The compression must satisfy something called Lawson's criteria, which states that you have to compress hydrogen gas of a certain density to a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. In other words, you're just putting it all together. You're, you're, you're compressing it. You're, you're pushing it in on each other. And in that creates the number two atom or element on the periodic table of elements. If these three conditions involving density, temperature, and time are met, density, temperature, and time are met, you will have a fusion reaction, whether it is a hydrogen bomb, a star, or a fusion in a reactor. These are points to think about family and study and to understand we have to go this way. Culture, family, you know where I'm coming from. I started this with culture. But the real issue that we're facing as a people on this planet is that if we are not a part of this, they're not going to have to enslave us. We're not going to be competent enough to do what needs to be done. They're not going to say, we're not going to hire you because you're black. They're going to say, we're not going to hire you because you don't know this information. Our children must be exposed to this. And as Dr. Richard said, the younger you go, you know, you know, the great astro, the, the, the great astrophysicist, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson tells in his story when he, in, in, in one of his books where he talks about when he was a very young man living in the Bronx, he went up on his roof. And, he, and somebody had a telescope. And for the first time in his life, he saw the moon. And now he's the director of the planetarium in the American Museum of Natural History because of what he experienced as a young man on his roof in the Bronx. I often wonder what would have happened if that individual didn't bring a telescope? We have to expose our children. It's not about an achievement gap. It's an opportunity gap. We have to expose our children to this information, to these ideas on their level. But we have to expose them to this information. Absolutely, brother. I mean, this is teaching. Brother, just to let you know, we've got five minutes left. Just to let you know, sir. Oh, we got five minutes left? <laughs> uh, brother, if, if you like, if you like, if you, you know, we're more than welcome to come back and do a part two, because I don't want you to rush it, brother. This is okay. such phenomenal teaching, brother. Phenomenal teaching. Absolutely. Um, you know, what we can do is that we can come back and we're going to start right here at Nuclear Fusion. Wow. We'll, we'll, we'll start here at Nuclear Fusion because I still have a ways to go. And wow. like you say, I can't cut nothing out. I don't want you to cut nothing out, brother, because this is it. This uh, because is this, it. I have to this give it. it to you this way. There's no other way to do this. And I would not shortcut it. I would not shortcut you. And I, but I also realize time. So I, so, so I respect time also. So we'll come back and we'll continue here at Nuclear Fusion. It'll also give people a chance to sort of kind of think about what we've talked about today and uh, do a little bit more research and uh, to be able to come down to certain concepts. And so 
We'll wrap up here in terms of nuclear fusion so that, can, so that we can move to the next level, brother. We'll plan for a future time where we'll be able to continue this conversation because it's just too important for us not to be able to move through Come this. Come on, brother. And move through it. But then again, I'd like to tell the family, let, me, let me encourage you, family. The books that I have written deal with this concept. Come on. And it's, it's done in a way like, for instance, spirituality before religions tells you all about the writings of our ancestors. There's a part that I talk about the Akhenaten and the, and the Aten text, and we examine it to a, from another perspective. In Shabaka Stone, I'm literally taking you through a cosmic interpretation of theory of how our ancestors saw the universe Woo! coming into existence through the cosmos. We have to get this information to our children. Brother, you, how can we get your books? What's the best way to get your books, King? Uh, right now, because of the nature of mailing and things like that, Amazon is the best way to do it. Okay, Sister Jurita, can we get, shall we get the link posted? Because we need every, we still got nearly 400 people still on the platform on laptops. We know we've got more than that in reality. We want every single person. Because Professor Kabbalah, I've got to say this, he won't say this. He does not charge us. He, he He's world renowned. He doesn't have to do this for us. He's doing all of this teaching totally free of charge out of his love and out of his heart. Brothers and sisters, let's support him financially because these are the brothers who are literally the liberation fighters for us today. Professor Kabbalah, please give us your books again. Let us know where we can find out more about your courses and your works. My first book that I wrote is uh, uh, on Professor William Leo Hansberry, who was the architect of the African Studies Program. My second book is titled Spirituality Before Religions. Spirituality is unseen science. Science is seen spirituality. That's the subtitle. My third book is Shabaka Stone, an African theory on the origin and continuing development of the cosmic universe. Woo! Family, every Tuesday I do a quibinar dealing with educational methodology because there's a difference between how you teach and what you teach. And every Tuesday, in fact, it's up now. If you go to my uh, website, www.kabakamene.com, K-A-B-A, K-A-M-E-N-E.com. You'll be able to download my free e-course and study guide. And at the same time, you can uh, register for my webinars, quick webinars, about a half hour, half hour in length. And then every first Sunday of the month, I do a webinar on one of the chapters in my book, Shabaka Stone. Every third Friday of the month, which will be this Friday, I'll be doing a webinar and there's a lot of talk about the original people who came to America. I just need to clear the air as to who the original Africans were who came to America. We need to understand this. And just like my sister, Dr. Marie Charles, there in UK, she, she has a magazine, MFIT. She is unearthing the evidence of the original, let's call them Europeans, the Irish, the original Irish Af who were Africans, the UK, Africans, Scandinavians, Africans. They were known as Skraelings. The original inhabitants of the planet were the Twa and Buti people, derogatorily called pygmy. They were the first family. Out of them came all of us. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. My um, Instagram page I use as a means of community involvement. I use it as a community bulletin board. That's at Kaba Kamene, at K-A-B-A-K-A-M-E-N-E. -E. You can follow the work I'm doing. You can follow where I'm going. You can follow... Uh, some of the um, lectures that I've done. So I encourage you to go to my website, www.kabakamane.com. 
you you be able to get a lot of my materials, particularly my study guide. You go to my Instagram page, Kaba Kamene, which is my bulletin board that talks to uh, the community about the work that I'm doing. And if something comes up that I'd like to talk about, we we talk there. And again, my books are on Amazon. And um, William Leo Hansberry and uh, Spirituality Before Religions. And uh, my latest book is Shabaka Stone. Beautiful. But my but my brother Andrew, I would like to say something, and I and and I do recognize, uh, I do not charge money. But community, I do have a charge. Yes. And that is for you to take this work to the next level, and for you to teach the children. I'm going to end with this. I once was with Dr. Clark. I was talking to him, and I said, "You know, Dr. Clark. I'm talking about Dr. John Henry Clark, the great historian." Yes. I, I said, you know, Dr. Clark, I, I could never repay you for what you've done for me in my life. And he said, you're right. You ain't got that much money. But he said, you can pay me back. You can pay me back by doing for others what I've done for you. I don't pay back. I pay forward. I don't do what I do for my ancestors. I do what I do through my ancestors, but for our children. The only way we, we could ever pay each other back is to continue the work. The only way we can continue Martin Luther King's work is to continue his work. We can have all the days off we want. We can have all the sales we want. We can have all the programs we want about Dr. King, but if we're not doing what he told us is in our best interest. We're not honoring him. We're just trying to honor ourselves, hoping that he'll appreciate naming a street after him. We must pay forward and look to our future. So all praise is due to the West Side Leadership Academy, to all of the teachers who are part of that, and for every school like that all around the world. I am Black first. I am a foundational Black American who is thoroughly Pan-African. Nebu Africa. No one group is going to get out of this alone. Together. Just like the brother had said earlier when he was talking about Usain Bolt. If one of us is great, imagine when all of us get together. Otep family, I look forward to the future. Well, Thank you, brother. Says Professor Kabar Kamene, please, you don't, it's, it's not for me. Show the love, brothers and sisters. Brother Professor, I wish you could see the, um, the, the chat. The chat is on fire. The chat is on fire. The chat is on fire, King. Brother, we're going to get a part two lockdown. ASAP, brother. Come on, London, show, show the love. Bristol, show the love. Manchester, show the love. Birmingham, Leeds. Not in it, not in them. Show the love. The Caribbean, show the love. Stateside, show the love. Professor Kabar, master teacher. Master teacher. Brother, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, my king. And um, I, I don't know. Just may Allah bless you and protect you and guide you in every step, in every thought, and in every action, my brother. We thank you. And we just can't wait for the next stage. Brothers and sisters, this is the hidden truth. You with Andrew Mohammed. We had the phenomenal, phenomenal brother, Professor Kabar, as our main teacher. Our brother spoke about the children of the sun. He went into the science of solar power, ancient and future. He asked the question, are we preparing our children? He answered that tonight. What can we learn from the ancients? He taught us tonight. Can we measure the wealth of the sun? He started off on that. And are we walking solar panels? Come on, brothers and sisters. He covered it all. And we've got to thank Dr. Mark Richards, um, the UK's top black physicist of Imperial College, yeah, leading the way of STEM and STEAM in the UK. And we heard a, we heard a conversation between two, two scientists, Professor Kabar, and our brother, Dr. Mark Richards. 
Show the love, brothers and sisters. Show the love. I know that we had probably a few questions. Time went against us. Time went against us, brothers and sisters, but we will be coming back. Brothers and sisters, Lady Adele, Brother Professor Kabar, I wish you was online to hear Lady Adele Ma'at. Oh my God, brother. We, we know, we know, brother, that as an educationalist, and she's a fellow educationalist, brother, the two of you have just blown us tonight. Brothers and sisters, make some love for Lady Adele, man. She dropped the gems prior to our brother, Professor um, Kamenade. So brothers and sisters, Lady Adele, you know that it was absolute science on this platform tonight. And we got to show that love. We're still, still, still busting up, brothers and sisters. Don't forget this coming Friday. This coming Friday is the Matrix versus June. The May 6th versus June. And we're going to take you on a spiritual, metaphysical, and historical journey through the Chosen One. And I know Professor Kabar, um, he will bear me witness that when we look at the heroes of these Chosen Ones, yes, the Europeans will give us, you know, the images that I've shown you here. But when we go back, we know that they're literally following the story of Heru. Professor Kabar, am I lying? The that is it. He was the hero. He was the he he, he 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 was he was the fighting for the light, for 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 righteousness, for the good against the forces of evil. Am I lying, Professor Kapar? That is the cornerstone to the Matrix and the Dune and just about every other story. The Osarian drama is the original drama set in pace for the world. The Lion King, all of them follow the Osarian drama. Star Wars, all of them. The Matrix is a particular, particularly looking at Morpheus. There's so much that could be said about that. that movie. It's there. You've heard it from the man himself. You heard it from the master teacher. This is what Brother Andrew, inshallah, will be going into. And I'm just saying, Professor Kabar has bared witness that this ain't no joke thing, brothers and sisters. We want to take you, as Baba said, that slingshot. Let's take you back so we can propel ourselves into the future. So brothers and sisters, we're going to go into the Matrix, the Dune, um, the African concept of Heru, that all of these things are based on, brothers and sisters. And believe it or not, you are the chosen one. So get your tickets tonight, Sister um, Sister Surima, um, Sister China, Sister Jurita, you let them know the reality behind that. And Brother Kabar, I'm glad that you're still on just for a few seconds. Next week, Brother Kabar, Professor Kabar, forgive me, brother. Professor Kabar, we have the man himself, Reverend Shock. Reverend Shock, the metaphysical. Pro Pro Professor Kabar, in one minute, for those who don't know this brother, what do you want to say? Because this is the brother that's next to you. We have to follow him. To follow someone like you, brother, we have to come hard. You know, it's interesting because as, uh, you know, I first met uh, brother uh, Philippe back in uh, 2014. Uh, and uh, this Sunday marks seven years of our associations. And we did our first presentation on in 2015 on the birthday of Martin Luther King, which was a Monday then. And um, this brother has developed a way in which to present information to the community. As you know, he's West Coast, I'm East Coast. Come on. But what brother is gonna do is the power to collapse time is to look at the, the time space continuum, which is the fourth dimension upon which Africans live. Part of our problem is the fact that we have not collapsed time. That's why we got caught up in time tonight because I'm operating on an African clock. But the reality of it is, is that in the world we're living in, <laughs> well, you see what happens. Time, time has its place. Time, space, continuum. We have been around all time and we will be everywhere. Time, space, continuum, the fourth dimension. We are a people who will rise by the will of our wills. It's just simple like that, family. We got this. We just got to manifest it. 
And that's what we're doing now as we speak. I know we may think it looks a little rough out there. Mm. But you know, after the great rains, the rainbow remains. And then the sun comes out. Beautiful. And when that sun comes out, fam, we got solar power because that's the future wealth of our planet. Fantastic. Brothers and sisters, Professor Kabar has given his backing to our next guest next week, but we're going LA, we're going West Coast, we're leaving the East Coast, we're going West Coast with the fantastic Reverend Shock Matthews, man, another brother that we love dearly here in the UK and around the world, brothers and sisters. So let's bear witness to this. Um, don't forget, we're going to be going into the hidden truth of Valentine's. We're going to go into the historical. We're going to take you back into the caves and hillsides of Europe to understand where this celebration comes from, brothers and sisters, and the reality of will you be my Valentine's? What does it really mean? This is next week, brothers and sisters. Again, we thank all of you on The Hidden Truth for last week raising over $1,000 in aid of a school in Jamaica, sorry, a charity in Jamaica, who are literally watching The Hidden Truth show on a little laptop, yeah? But we wanna now make sure that we give them funds that they can build that community, build a kitchen, get the right resources so we can support our children in Jamaica. So we thank all of you for literally supporting this work. Brothers and sisters, lastly, please do me a favor. We're gonna start pushing this every week now because I don't normally talk about this. Please, 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 tonight, go on to the, um, the, the Hidden Truth or Investigator um, channel, YouTube channel, click and subscribe, brothers and sisters. You'll get all the updates, you'll get all the new videos, but we're also we're gonna be doing some live stuff on YouTube. So I'm asking you tonight, Sister Jurita, Sister Sarima, can you put the link on for the Hidden Truth um, Investigator channel on YouTube? I want everyone on this, maybe we've got over seven, 800 people on this platform, if we include everyone, please hit on that, subscribe to, um, to the Investigator channel, because we're gonna start expanding very soon. Very, we're going to be got some new operations. Now, brothers and sisters, I thank you so much. We have had the illustrious, great, phenomenal teacher in our brother, Professor Kabar. We thank the brother. We thank the brother. We thank the brother from the bottom of our last. So brothers and sisters, I want to greet you in the greeting words of peace and in paradise. Assalamu alaikum. For those of you that want to stay on for our little after party, um, I've got a little. I've got, I, 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 I've got to deal with something right now. This is the, the lecture's finished, brothers and sisters. For those who want the after party, drop some music. It's Bubbles teaching that music and time intertwines within our spirits, brothers and sisters. But we've got Sister Sarima, a new member of the Hidden Truth team, and she's stepping to me, brothers and sisters. Um, why I allowed her. I allow, no, no, Jurita, don't shake your head, man, because you just you, said Sarima you, you me, again. No. Can this you correct me. Brother Andrew, sis? Help me. Help me. Oh, Sarima. Oh, Sarima. Oh, Sarima. oh gosh. What did Jesus I say? Sarima. What did I say? What did I say? Oh, That's God. what you said, what you just said. You said it again. Sarima. I'm going to put it down to the fantastic teachings that we have been 